George had three great looking boats. But just looking boaty didn't make them float. At last, George had something he knew would float. Bill wasn't going to win any contest with a tiny board. <laughs> no! <laughs> and this is what he had to work with. <laughs> Maybe it was time to study boats in action. Wide boats seem to work well. Steam coming out. A propeller. And a good solid bottom. Okay, a wide boat with steam coming out, and a propeller. All done! I'm just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Delivery is an exact business. People expect it at the same time every day. <laughs> Thanks for watching my boat. Where is my boat? George! You built this yourself? <laughs> wow. I thought city kids just bought everything. Where'd you say my boat was? George? <laughs> I forgot to close the windows. Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Come on, let's go enter. Hey, you gotta bring your boat to enter it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Who else has a boat like that? Let's hear it for our winners! <laughs> Congratulations, George. I, I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. <laughs> There's nothing an inquisitive monkey likes more than discovering new things. <laughs> and the museum's a great place for discoveries. Like how different something can seem when you look at just a small part of it. <laughs> Hi, George. Ooh. 
<laughs> You're getting a close look at our dinosaur exhibit, I see. <laughs> then you'll be interested in this. This newly discovered Stegosaurus skeleton is our next exhibit. <laughs> Discovering dinosaur bones look like the best job in the world. Ooh. The museum always gave George lots to think about. <coughs> Unlike Charky, who only ever thought about one thing. Playing. discovered a bone. That magnifying glass would have come in handy, but Charky was probably blocks away by now. couldn't let Charky chew on it. What if some dinosaur lost this bone on its way to the museum? Stegosaurus had all his bones. So did the Triceratops. And the Tyrannosaurus. If a dinosaur hadn't lost it, what kind of bone could it be? There was always a box of Hunley's treats in the lobby. was helping get ready for breakfast while the man with the yellow hat got an early jump on some important work. <sighs> this country air is just what I needed. Yeah, by tonight, my speech for the tribute to Professor Wiseman will be perfect. <laughs> uh, her great vision. Oh, uh, her great insight exhibit, right? Uh, uh, algae. <laughs> Woolly mammoth. Her love of the wooling mammoth. <laughs> hmm, I don't. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, oh, okay, okay, I'll stop for breakfast. <laughs> well, fruit and eggs are good. <laughs> These cupboards are too small for us. Maybe we should buy less food. <laughs> the thought of having less food made George more hungry. Well, we still need breakfast. 
Hey, I'll run to the market. Maybe you can finish my speech for me while I'm gone. out with extra nuts. <laughs> He's storing food. Squirrels hide food in the ground. Then when they need it, they dig it up and have plenty to eat. <laughs> George never knew the ground was such a good place to store food. <laughs> George and the man with the yellow hat needed a good place to store food. to the rewards of squirrel-style storage. <laughs> mm. Mm. George, these donuts are delicious! <laughs> George, this fish is phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now for breakfast, then back to work on my speech. <laughs> Where's our food? George, I think there's a food thief on the loose. Why would someone steal paprika? <laughs> George wanted to explain that he had it all taken care of. <sighs> <laughs> Paprika! Why would someone bury paprika? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hunley always led people through the lobby, so he used his skills to lead George around obstacles. Monkey sitting George, then guiding him around the furniture. Hunley cleaned up after him, too, which had its rewards. <laughs> he also helped with those itches that George couldn't reach. George's chair driving improved, and Hunley looked forward to coming over. Good morning to you too, Hunley. And then, something changed. <laughs> Remember, use the crutches, don't step on your cast, and be a good little monkey, uh, and dachshund. 
They taught George to use the crutches in the hospital. <laughs> but he needed practice. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon, George was as good on crutches as he was on his own feet. And as soon as he got really good... Good news, Hunley! George is allowed to walk on his cast now! George showed Hunley how his leg was healing. But dachshunds don't read x-rays. Hunley didn't like to get too far from his lobby. But George wanted to go for a walk. He also wanted to go for a climb. But that wasn't allowed. Hunley was one serious monkey sitter. They went to the park every day. George drew some good pictures. And Hunley discovered he liked lying on grass and taking slow strolls with a monkey. See? The break's all healed. Hello! George was thrilled to be completely free again. Back to normal, I see. Good as new. Thanks for all of your help, Hundley. <laughs> Guess you're back on lobby duty with me, boy. George wanted Hunley to come with him. But Hunley had a job to do. George brought his friends back so he and Hunley could be together. <laughs> George was back to normal, all right. <laughs> George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. This part of the couch made a different sound. That wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? <laughs> George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. <gasps> the man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? What kind? <laughs> of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> The man with 
the yellow hat had to hear this. George? <laughs> you, you dreamt about an elephant? nature books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. <laughs> this is better bedtime reading. The happy, sleepy monkey. <laughs> Good night. This new sound certainly wasn't an elephant walking around. It was an elephant that was doing what? Sleep at all last night. George never realized there were so many sounds in the world. He'd never listened hard enough. to the apartment upstairs, where the new neighbor lived, with his elephant. <laughs> Bringing home a new rug is always a one-man, one-monkey job. So George was happy to have his friend, the man with the yellow hat, around to help. Uh, I'll take the front, George, and you make sure the back doesn't hit anything or drag on the ground. <laughs> but, hold on, we all clear back there? <laughs> okay, I'm putting it down. <laughs> Whew, thanks, George. Boy, I am so happy I got this rug. George liked the way the big tube looked in the room. <laughs> looked good flat, too. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Wiseman was right. It's a perfect rug. Oh, I've got to take a picture to show her. Oh, uh, wouldn't you know? I forgot to buy batteries. Okay, I'll be right back. Be a good little monkey. What a great rug. <laughs> Hauling a rug always makes a monkey thirsty for grape juice. A lot of grape juice. The rug made for good toe squishing. So it would probably be fun to jump on. <laughs> this wasn't good. George had to get that juice off the rug. <laughs> Not 
now what? <laughs> soap. Soap cleans stuff. So more soap cleans stuff more. Bubble bath would make it smell good. Definitely too much soap. Okay, perfect. But there was something missing. Water! today. Well, I'd like to buy this. It'll go perfectly with my great new rug. Wait, wait, these legs. Hmm. Yeah, I'm afraid they'd snag my great new rug. Oh, I could fix that. Swap those legs out for ones that are less snaggy. Just take a few minutes if you don't mind waiting. I can't wait to get a picture of that footstool on my new rug. Ah. <sighs> Oh, uh, did I mention I just got a great new rug? <laughs> George had to get all those suds out of the house so he could see if the rug was clean. George was happy he spotted the glass of juice. That could have caused a real mess. Ah. Watching for the man with the yellow hat to come home was easy for a sharp-eyed monkey like George. Because nobody else was that yellow. <laughs> well, almost no one. Seeing the man was great. But seeing him with a present was even better. <laughs> well, hello. How was your morning? Were you a good little monkey? <laughs> That's my monkey. Hold on, George. That present's not for you. Huh? It's for Professor Wiseman's birthday. You can see what's inside when she opens it. Uh, tonight at dinner. <laughs> dinner was years away. Maybe just one peek now. If you really want to unwrap something, come in the kitchen. <laughs> Here. You can pretend the orange peel is gift wrap. You'll be helping me in unwrapping, too. Oh. <laughs> orange skin didn't feel like gift wrap. But there was something good inside. <laughs> Maybe that thick skin was there to hold back squirts. Now, the onion head skin that felt like gift wrap but it didn't smell like any present. <laughs> and no wonder they keep cheese wrapped up. <coughs> These coverings were all different, but they hid the same thing. Yeah. Something smelly. 
But that couldn't be the same reason the present was wrapped, could it? George, could you please peel me one apple? <laughs> this was much better. The apple smelled good. George, after you've done one apple, leave the bowl of unpeeled fruit out, okay? Those are Professor Wiseman's favorites that I bought especially for her birthday. Um, George, could you pick up my pants for me? They're being altered at the department store. Don't worry, we won't open it without you. Phew. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll be back in one moment with the pants. The man with the yellow hat was right. This errand had completely taken George's mind off the... Fancy, beautiful wrapped present. <laughs> nothing to eat, nothing to smell, nothing. All George uncovered was a mystery. Why just wrap empty boxes? George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun-dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. George forgot to watch where he was going. <gasps> Fortunately, he was wearing a helmet. Unfortunately, the bike was not. The walk home was a long one for George. Hey, George. Are you looking for someone to repair that wheel? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, not Leslie. Come on. <laughs> you think you could get George's wheel rolling again? I know I can. I think we can fix this. It seemed to be going well, but George felt he should help. A wrench. George knew how to use that. Hey, ah! That looks good. Now let's fix these spokes. <laughs> Terrific. Huh? Next, we check balance. Ah! That looks good. Now the tube. All right. Aha! Uh -huh. Just needs a patch.
Where is that wrench? <laughs> oh, thank you, George. <laughs> All we need now is some air in the tires. George hadn't helped as much as he wanted to. <laughs> Perhaps one or two minor adjustments. He did, however, know how to use a pump. George rushed home to tell the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. <laughs> George, I have a surprise for you. Huh? <laughs> oh, George, Bill came by. Apparently, some people didn't get their newspapers today. Yep, one lady saw a duck riding in a newspaper boat, but it wouldn't get out and let her read the headlines. <gasps> Suddenly, George remembered he hadn't told the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. You're not Dr. Kazan. Are you really a doctor? <laughs> I've been waiting so long, I don't even care. <laughs> I have this terrible ah, ah, <laughs> sneeze. It goes away. It comes back. It goes away. <laughs> the sweater was muffling the sounds inside. There was one way to fix that. <laughs> uh, should I keep breathing? It might help if I take this off. Monkey, Do doctor, monkey. <gasps> oh, I'm not cured. <sighs> I'm allergic to this sweater. You're the best doctor I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because you're a monkey. George had cured his first patient, but then. Is that you? A doctor never ignores a patient in need. <laughs> hey, you're a monkey. <laughs> my problem is my arm, not my throat. I'll wait for Dr. Gazoon, because you're a monkey. Did you hear that weird noise, too? What is that? Shh. I've had the hiccups for two weeks. I get Stop! Well, aren't 
you gonna help me? What kind of a monkey doctor are you? That's him. That's the monkey that tried to make me go ah. He's a genius monkey doctor. He discovered my allergy. George, do you have permission to be a doctor? What's going on out here? George, what are you wearing? You haven't performed any operations, have you? What was that? You don't know? I figured it was your medical machinery. Dr. Gazooned. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello. I, I came in here during my break to play just one round. I, I must have lost track of time. <laughs> Nothing feels as great as monkey curiosity satisfied. Oh, my! My hiccups are cured! <laughs> George liked the stethoscope and Dr. Coat so much that Dr. Baker let him keep them. <laughs> and though Hunley was grateful the lobby was peaceful, he started to worry that someday George might really be his doctor. <laughs> It had been a particularly rewarding day at the going out of business store. George couldn't imagine how this day could get any better. Or maybe it could. Mabel's department store had added a fresh homemade candy counter. I don't know about you, but I simply can't walk away from blue candy. <laughs> but I can't carry this into Mabel's. Ooh, the pyramid sort of enhances the pinkness, don't you think? Mm. I'm working on a rhombus shape, but it keeps falling over. A rhombus? It's a work in progress. Anyway, welcome to Kaylee's Candies. I'm Kaylee. We'd like four small boxes. Great! This is my first order today. No one could wait till they got home to try the chocolates. George's box has four, not six. You got shortchanged. He can have two of mine. I just wanted to taste anyway. So can I have your other three? <laughs> George didn't think it was fair for anyone to sacrifice. <laughs> there was only one right thing to do. Uh, oh, nuts. <coughs> Oh, you want to buy two more? <laughs> You're missing two. <laughs> How do I know you didn't eat them? <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly haven't eaten any chocolate. Boy, you sure have nice teeth. <laughs> Pick any two you want. Sorry I shortchanged you. I put some of these boxes together at home and my cat distracts me. <laughs> oh dear. I need to pick up more stock, but I can't just leave. Hey, would you mind watching the counter? <laughs> 
<laughs> You're obviously extremely honest. And I've hardly had any business all day. All you have to do is watch the chocolates while I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you so much. The Mysterious Rhombus. George wondered if he could make a rhombus. It didn't seem hard. <laughs> Why did other shapes stack better? Maybe they went together by shape, not color. George concentrated on his work. <clears throat> George hadn't expected any customers. I want a box of chocolates for my wife. Do you have mints? Are these mints? Well, what are those? <laughs> Uh, that doesn't look like a mint. The next blue one had the same filling, and it still wasn't mint. Well, don't you have a flavor chart? <laughs> Summer afternoon. The perfect time for a game of Find the Pigeon. <laughs> okay, George, playtime's over. Time to clean your room. <laughs> you can play with Compass after you clean your room. <laughs> Time, George. <laughs> I don't think you'll fit in the bird bath, George. You're definitely a tub monkey. <laughs> okay, time to brush your teeth and hit the sack, George. Even though being a monkey was the greatest thing ever, pigeons didn't have to do what anybody told them. George, time to clean your room, take a bath, wash your ears, brush your teeth, go to bed, wake up, make yourself breakfast. So the next morning, George made up his mind to live like a pigeon. It turned out that birds had special pecking equipment. didn't come with wings. Plus, pigeons didn't have to wait for the don't walk light. Ha <laughs> ha! 
George had lost his flock. To be a pigeon, you had to fly. Being a cat looked like a lot less work than being a pigeon. Now this was the life. And no one made Gnocchi clean her room. Plus, cats took a bath wherever they wanted. Whenever they wanted. A cat bath was okay. If you didn't mind a hairy mouth and a spitty face. Maybe being a cat wasn't for George either. Here were lots of animals who didn't have to clean their rooms or brush their teeth. Surely George could find one he could be. Like a chameleon. They could change color effortlessly. <laughs> Monkeys couldn't. <laughs> Fish never had to stop playing to take a bath. But George wasn't good enough at holding his breath to be a fish for very long. What else would make a bathtub feel more like home to a turtle? Frogs. George, need any help there? <laughs> oh, these? Here you go. The flippers look like frog feet. <laughs> Wait, you can't run into the... Uh, never mind. Well, you're in anyway. You'll want this too. <laughs> the flippers helped him swim fast enough to catch up with frogs. It also helped that the frogs had never seen another frog so big and hairy before. <laughs> now his tub even sounded like the turtle's home. Maybe sand and snails and frogs just weren't enough. George brought back all the green lake stuff he could find, even the slimy things. He'd accidentally caught a fish. The turtle had to like that. How could sand and snails and frogs and lily pads and slimy things, plus a fish, not be enough? The only thing the lake had that this tub didn't was Mr. Quint. Maybe a monkey could never make a turtle happy. Except by leaving it alone. So George decided to go back to what he was doing in the first place searching for Bill's lost disc. What he discovered was more than just a lost toy. <gasps> and they could hold their breath for a long, long time. Much longer than a monkey. What a day. I can't wait for a nice long soak in the tub. Whoa! Who are you? 
<laughs> George, has it really been that long since I cleaned the tub, or did you do this? Everybody's back home. <laughs> I hope you've learned there's more to a happy home than just a dirty bathtub. Thinking back, George realized even though it would be fun to have worms living under his bed, <laughs> they'd be happier in their own home, dirt. Still, it was exciting to think new friends might turn up right in your own backyard. Or even under it.